Hello everybody, welcome back to this week's edition of Kuga Talk with Kuga is Bay from Kuga City Gaming. Today we are looking at some of the things around ESO. So let's get started. Um, basically Gina dropped this on December 6th. I know it's like the 8th. I should have done a video then, but guys, like, I have a life too, so. Basically she's like, yeah, we, we know there's an issue with Block. We know this issue has been going on for a while. We know it went live with yesterday's patch. Um, we're fixing it, but it's gonna take some time to fix. And... We understand how frustrating this is. We'll let you know as soon as possible and to expect the fix. But expect it to be on or around December 19th. You know, to be honest, I I like the fact that she was up front with the time frame of that. So I get it. You know, that that's pretty awesome. I understand that's you know legit. That's I'm okay with this. I'm, I'm very okay with this so whatever we'll 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 see we'll see what happens so at the end of the day this is this is what's going on so demonic goat asked on the forums you know if there should be a fair compensation um basically ESO plus if sauce is going to reimburse like can we get some ESO plus please and Barbara Seven Trees like this is why I only sub one month at a time, which I let expire when things like this happen. She's letting that ESO Plus expire quite a bit. Then um, there's never compensation for a lost fly, a lost time plan unless you count the occasional free pet that no one would want to purchase. Anyway, I don't know. The Guar was pretty fun, but yeah, I probably wouldn't purchase it. My husband, yeah, because he loves Guars, but ah, uh, probably not. May as well give as expired twinkies uh pro may as well give us I, they put as uh expired twinkies are last year's halloween candy <laughs> okay many i know are taking a break aka looking for another game to play like most of the twitch content creators are yeah but guess what the twitch content creators are playing they're playing god of war and freaking ashes of creation those are not like maybe ashes of creation when it gets like better but those are not anywhere near the ESO level. Um, I wish, you know, if, if you're going to play another game kind of like ESO that has like the same, uh, like, I don't know, the same kind of environment as ESO, um, GTA is probably the closest thing, uh, PvP wise. I mean, Ashes of Creation is okay, but like, ah, eh. Um, people would be going back to New World, uh, a lot in hordes and such. ESO, I wish they would have the Final Fantasy team, the development team working with ESO, because then this game would be a lot more popular, because shit would get fixed in a timely fashion, and we wouldn't be having these discussions. So, while I agree people are playing other games they're not they're gonna come back to ESO like come on now it ain't gonna happen like they're gonna have to really piss off everybody in the freaking game and those twitch content creators guess what folks there'll be more twitch content creators for this game so if somebody leaves other people will replace it happens like you remember when the asian god left well, guess what? Charles and Ninja Guy, like, they replaced that guy. It will happen. Like, Skinny Cheeks is there. Like, he kind of replaced Outcast. Skinny Cheeks did. Sayano basically, you know, has been around with Outcast. Like, those guys pretty much replaced the other guys that came in in front of him. So, they'll still be content, um, content creators. Cargan says, we don't need compensation if we were unable to log in the game for two months. And yeah, give us two months of ESO+. Plus. I agree. If we were not able to log into the game, I can definitely see that. But um, the we don't need compensation, um, yeah. Um, yeah, we kind of do. We kind of do need a little bit of a little bit something something. A little bit of the good good. So... This Hapasimendias guy says, while the bugs certainly is an inconvenience, there's still plenty of things to do. Um, 
he's like, yeah, Sauce can make this argument. That's why there's not going to be any conversation. I agree that there should be, but it isn't happening. I mean, this is probably the, the, um, this is probably what's going to happen, folks. Like, let's be real. Um, should it be like that? No. I really think with the way the game has been going lately that, um, you know, it shouldn't be like that. But with the whole, um, Gina Bruna and such, the New York Times did a, a thing that Sauce is trying to unionize. And maybe that's the reason why we've had shitty patch notes for the last year is people have just been very shitty workspace and work based. Um, that's possibility. Very, very big possibility. Um, the, I think one of the developers in sauce, um, or the, I don't know. I can't remember exactly who, who it was, but, uh, when I was reading the, the time, the New York times, they said that they could be making more money <clears throat> at another company doing similar kind of things. Um, well, I agree. Like you should be compensated fairly. And I do agree with, you know, the sentiment, X, the Cinemax employees trying to unionize. Like if you're, if you really feel that strong about the work environment, yes, try to change and do something about it. Um, especially if you want to keep working there. But to be honest, if you're really that, that, upset and that broken down that you feel like that to to go to the new york times and express that you're not being compensated and that other places could you know give you more money i'm not sure if that person looked into other places into other job opportunities but if it was me i would have done it i would have just said okay guys bye like you know i would have started looking for other job opportunities and just left i mean if you're going to say something like that, maybe they did. Maybe they did. Maybe they looked and, you know, they didn't get it. But I don't know. If, if I felt really that upset at a company to be saying those things publicly, then I would have just left if that was the truth. If another company offered me better paying job. And like I said, I'm not sure if that person went and looked at other companies, uh, hiring practices and kind of shopped around, shopped themselves around, but I would have like the pandemic has opened up a lot of shopping around and there's a ton of companies that are doing remote stuff. So what's to stop her doing that? I don't know. That's just my opinion. Um, that's just the kind of person I am. I, I, I'm, I hate being miserable at a job. So if I'm getting to that point where I'm miserable, then I just, I just don't, don't do it. I leave. Like I, I start looking for something and then I leave. Um, there's companies out there that will, that will ask, Hey, why are you leaving your job? Cause I'm miserable. And you know, like a good response to that interview is I'm miserable at my current job and I feel like your job workplace will give me a better opportunity to be happy and create um, the environment that I would thrive and enjoy working for and would take it to the next level. Basically making my job um, a lot easier, not just for you, but, f but for me. And if I'm happy, I'm going to work harder. So you know, that, that's, that's the kind of response that I would give if somebody asked me, Hey, why, why are you leaving your job? You know, like, why are you looking? Um, if you're miserable, then just be honest, just be honest with a company like that. You know, when you're getting hired, um, I know that's like a little bit of coaching for, for company hiring. If, if you're not happy with your current job, but no, it has nothing to do with ESO. But if, if that's the case, you know, just, just go out there, folks. And uh, <laughs> the crypt is like, you'll have your war and you'll like it. Um, Outlaw Nix. Nope, I've been here since console launch. They've never been, they've never given ESO Plus members extra time. Just be happy with the guar, I guess. Um, I Actually, there has been people that have been given ESO Plus. They have talked to Sony and they've talked to Bethesda or uh, Cinemax about it. And they have been given ESO Plus. 
Um, it was like a month or like two weeks or something. It wasn't like anything extravagant, like a three month or four month. Yeah, so plus it was like either like a week or two or a month. I think the the longest one I've I've heard of is a month. But uh, usually you go through Sony and that, and they'll they'll usually do that. They'll compensate you on that. And um, and this guy's like, I admire optimism that everything will be fine <laughs> after two months. Oh goodness! And then this guy's like, oh stop, please, just sweeping stop. It's not game breaking. The VK just on Saturday with the bug and we did it. It's not game breaking, not the slightest, bro. Bro, it is game breaking. What are you talking about? This is a person that has not done harder content. Yes, Swashbuckler Supreme was done with the block freaking bug. I'm not saying it's not able to be done, but it is game breaking. Like VKA, especially like VKA, VRG those trials you need to block in certain aspects so while you say you know it's not game breaking it is there's a Dawnbringer prog that's happening that a couple of our members are in and they're having a rough time because of this block glitch um so i you know i admire you trying to like tell people it's not game breaking but it is is it as big as, you know, people wanted to put it? No, there's still content being done. Like I said, there's a team that did Swashbuckler Supreme. I'm sure there's teams that can do Dawnbringer, but... Like, even Skinny said, um, when he was saying this stuff, that some of his, some of his um, progs have stopped because of the bug. So, I, I understand that it's, you can still get content done. But it's just frustrating when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and the game isn't allowing you to to do what you're doing and you're getting punished for it. So, no, no. And <laughs> Dr. Khan says, is progress halting? You got people who other are otherwise A or B tier tanks beat down to D and F tier because of these bugs. True story. Dodge rolling through a summer Savaka's focus attacks only to be hit by one of the five or six consecutive slashes she does when you think you're blocking. Sprinting, then holding block, giving the full block animation, blah, 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 not working. Until you let go of the shift, causing you to dash to Samaja while you're kiting, crushing darkness, and then have to block the heavy attack. Ed down right sucks, and they haven't been transparent on fixes, only that fixes were in the works. If they want to be transparent, they be uploading their fixes to PDS and asking for feedback. Um, I agree with you until this. Um, it's not like they're not being transparent. They're being as transparent as they can and more transparent than in the past. Like Gina, for Gina to come out and say, I mean, I agree. She probably should have said it a lot sooner because console has been experiencing this shit for the, like since Fire Song dropped. And PC is only getting the full blown of it um, now with the patch. So, you know, like, this should have been said when Firestone dropped for... When the when the glitch was figured out. Um, so, if they upload this shit to PTS, like... I don't know. They're, I don't think it's gonna be as beneficial... Because I don't think people are going to be going on PTS as much to look at every single little fix that's being uploaded. And there's not going to be enough time. Like, when you think about it, Sauce is in a timeline right now. And they're basically... When you think about it, they have to do certain things on PTS before the release. So they're putting out content before the release. Um... If you add that on top of it, like, that's just more work for everybody on the team to, like, be putting these fixes in PTS. To be honest, I like the way it is now. Um, if anything, maybe slow down, you know, um, or maybe shorten PTS a little bit. 
and do more change like instead of five weeks of pts maybe go down to four and then use that last week to um basically still have four weeks of pts but the week that you take off is week that you actually work on the content a little bit more so like the developers have one more week to work on stuff um basically at that point you have if you broke that week into two parts you could have the first part before pts where you know they're working on stuff and then the second half after pts um where you're basically working on the kinks and such in pts you have a little bit more time so if anything yeah um, this guy's like, I appreciate you sharing your opinion. Yeah, I mean, this guy says, you know, we really don't need ESO Plus. I agree with that person. I don't think ESO Plus, um, you know, should be thing. And this, this is the last comment. And the Monic Goat, like, is 100% true on his. Not game breaking. It's a core mechanic that hasn't worked properly for weeks on top of other issues. The amount of wasted time and anxiety that the player ha base has had to deal with certainly seems like ground for compensation to me. It's an opportunity after everything that has gone wrong to sincerely begin making amends. Wow. This right here. If anything... And then, like, no, nah, I'm not stopping. I, I agree, you shouldn't stop. Because that whole comment right there, this guy doesn't... Like, if, if you're doing the content that is really downright disgusting and you're getting it done with with ease, then, I mean, are you one of the developers and you already put the block freaking crap in your, in your PC and are able to do it? Because, like, people are still struggling. Like, good players are still struggling. So it's not just, like, the shitty players in ESL. Good players are struggling with this uh, bug, but back to this. this is an opportunity after everything has gone to begin making amends. Absolutely. Please, Sauce, you need to begin making amends because what you're doing now is you're pissing off the player base. Um, I agree it shouldn't be anything like too crazy. Um, to be honest, give everybody that logged in and the what a fair compensation I think what I what I think a fair compensation would be is give everybody that has logged in the game while this has happened maybe a X number amount of crates from the last set of crates that we just had that way you still have a chance to sell the newer set of crates so give them i, I think five crates is you know or or like 1500 crowns to everybody that has logged in the game um actually i think the crowns whatever the five crates is worth i think the crowns might be more beneficial because like it'll help players get whatever they want um and maybe you know like another pet or something um, or a costume or, you know, furnishing something, maybe even like two 150 XP scrolls for, you know, something like that. I think that would be fair. And I don't think it should be like this every time. I think this is really the start of an opportunity to, to begin making amends. And 1,500 crowns, I know that's a lot of money that you're giving out to the entire player base. But everybody that has logged in during that period, like when Fire Song started, I think should be compensated in some way, shape, or form. And to do that, like, you know, the 1,500 crowns plus, you know, maybe two XP scrolls or like... A costume like a sh it can be a shitty costume it doesn't matter costume pet some kind of like special furnishing um, like whether it be like a painting furnishing like we got like in the ESO plus uh, maybe like I mean I don't know like it can be anything 
any anything small like another pet um x i mean xp scrolls would probably be the best thing you know we have the new life coming up i personally think that conversation is very fair not only that but it helps with this statement it is an opportunity that you can begin making amends and people are still going to be saying like oh 1500 crowns that's shit no it's not guys like think about it from a business point of view folks they have to make money they have to make money in one way shape or form um, and 1,500 crowns, while it's not a lot to us, it is a lot to a company when they're giving it out in mass, um, mass form. So think about it like that. Just, just think about that. But I think that would be a start. And like I said, it doesn't have to be like that every single time, but they can say, Hey guys, like we understand we've been shitty the last year we really want to start making amends with the community like hey we're having some internal issues you know with the union and they can go back to saying hey you know like part of the reasons because we just not have been focused on the game like we should be um and i mean people to be honest there's people out there that are going to be okay with with that because you're being honest you're being honest to the community and we understand like you know sometimes the job environment is a shitty environment and now with that whole new york times article that you guys are you know the cinemax is trying to unionize it's understandable like i understand you know th their work environment is bad so i get it i i understand and it makes a little bit of sense like i don't i mean i'm not 100 percent sure of what's happening in closed doors but um there's a video that i was watching the other day too saying that some guy from microsoft knew like people were getting fired and such at cinemax soon and i mean if i knew if some people knew some people didn't but let's say that whoever knows at cinemax is good friends with the person and they're gonna say hey like you know you're in the chopping block um it's it's gonna be like you know six months but you know they're they're gonna want you to to finish the project you're currently working on but you're gone after six months you know if it was me that was being told this it, it sucks you know because you feel underappreciated at your company and you're like i put all this hard work into this place and i'm being let go um so i mean if if somebody is putting their their hard work into their job i understand why you know the, this is demoralizing so well again i i don't know what's happening behind closed doors like it's this is all speculation um i get it if this is what's really happening I get it and this makes sense but like I said and like this guy says the Monic goat it is an opportunity after everything that's happening and everything that has gone wrong to start making amends for the community and you need to make amends Cinemax you really do um, it, you need to that's that's all I have to say so yeah that's that's all i have to say on that one uh fbs 94 says automated tales of trivia gameplay option hello i for some reason i'm not able to find the motivation in myself to learn how to play the tales of trivia card game let alone master it i propose the idea of having the option of choosing for the game to automatically play against the opponent whether it be play against the ai or another player so i personally would like to have an option for eso to play the matches whether if, if the game is against an ai or another player bro no no why um 
if you're play, yeah, this person says if you're trying to play to get mail rewards and the NPC achievements, you can play against the NPCs without learning the actual game. Here's how: the NPCs are bad at flipping the patrons to prevent you from getting a patron victory, and there's no punishing, there's no punishing for abandoning an NPC game. So if the NPC picks even a single patron, that's hard to cheese. Um, them with an early patron victory, i.e. Sigix, Pelin, Orgrim. Just ban the game and restart until you get the only easy p patrons to flip. I recommend unlocking unsafe uh, friend art hunting first, as that's an easy one to do this with. Raging helps too, one of the base ones. Crow and Hulalu are the easy ones. Doing this, I could win a match. I could win a match in under two minutes. Two minutes, which was pretty nice farming. And this person says, sure, as long as it's only a tutorial with no rewards, if somebody doesn't want to put even a single smidge of effort into doing an activity, then they shouldn't get rewards for it. I agree. I agree with this 100%. To be honest, if you want to kind of see what... Because there really isn't a big tutorial, so like, for the game itself, um past what you you know the in the beginning so if if it is like a tutorial ish with no rewards then sure um and then this guy even as an achievement hunter that would skip tails entirely um and this one's saying well assuming ai is fair that would be 50 percent when looking at confusing card fiddling for a while they can save a lot of resources in serving competitions by just replacing the whole hubble Hollow Blue was simple press to win every second time button. Um, and this guy's like, Jesus, take them to be honest. No, if you're no, if you're going to do this, then you shouldn't be getting rewards or achievements for it. So if you, if you don't care for it, no. And then this person goat forever. If we start automating things, why even bother playing in the first place? If the activities are done for you, should they start automating trials, dungeons, and other things? Exactly. Like, if you automate Tales of Tribute, then what next? Um, somebody's saying that they have actually built an add-on of uh, real-time assistance. My idea here is to make an engine that runs in the background and calculates the, the best moves every turn. It then highlights the best move in game for you to do. Essentially, you can play perfect taught without having to understand or pay attention to the game. The engine is already good enough to hit number one on the leaderboards and runs at a 85% rate. Wow. I would... This right here... I would not allow this add-on in the game because there's, like... Right here, this right here. The engine is already good enough to hit number one on the leaderboards and runs at an 85% win rate. That's a hell of a lot of win rate. Um, and this one says, and this is true because it's cheating. Oh, yes, let's advertise my cheat engine for Tot on the official game forums. And they're like, it's not cheating if it's allowed in the terms of services. And I didn't run it in game yet because I wanted to at least run it through a ticket before I did that. And. <laughs> oh, my God. To be honest, let, let's just let's just get out of this because. Wow. <laughs> I, I can't. I can't right now. Um, this guy's like, when is Sauce getting rid of the third-party farm bots on Xbox? There's some on PlayStation 2. Um, seriously, you need to get rid of the farm bots on Xbox. It's nearly impossible to have any good farming routes. Start banning IP addresses. They will get around the IP address banning thing, bro. Like, and that's, um, if anything, you start banning the PlayStations. That's how you do it. And you have to go through Sony through that. Um, so if you're, if they really wanted to seriously do that, they, I mean, I mean, they start banning through, uh, Sony to where they can't even like, if it, if it's a PlayStation, they ban the PlayStation, they, they ban the PlayStation. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Um, 
given the current predicament of the game, I seriously doubt they have the manpower to devote to dealing with the bot issue. That's another issue as, as well in itself. So, unfortunately, I agree they should be doing something about it. Um, I already said what they could do to make this basically stop. And it's literally just get rid of the PlayStation. And it will, or like, block the Xbox from entering the game. Basically, having a PlayStation ban or an Xbox ban on the PlayStation itself. So, there you go. Um, two gallon leads and treasure maps. So, we need to talk about this because <laughs> these maps are going for like in the six digits on PlayStation. And I think they're going in the like five to one mil in, in PC. So, two leads so far drop in Galen's zone. Treasure maps in Galen's antiquities. One of them is the shoulders outfit style, the other one's the petrified bark tree tablet for the skin i understand the shoulders one not a motif in the zone so i guess it's kind of the same vibe although i haven't gotten it myself i guess they're not a style page or motif that you can buy so it feels worse than a motif but the skin it feels like a big snip uh you need to farm all the nine fragments in different bosses some buggy ones included notes dungeons daily reward coffers which feel awful, but I guess they force players to keep playing on a daily basis, so that works for you. Only to find the remaining one has a chance of dropping in treasure map chest, and it can drop either the skin part or the shoulders part. Not that you can buy the lead directly, anyone, so it comes to gambling 1 to 10 million gold, or even more if your luck is bad. Prices will drop, but I doubt they'll go under 300k each for a couple of months. There is no way to farm treasure maps from a certain zone, which also is something that has been asked for years now. Personally, I spent time um, in DLCs getting all leads, farming vents mainly, and I've gotten one treasure map from Galen in three days of playing quite intensively. This is a terrible game design and on so obvious level that I can't believe this wasn't intended to fuck off people. And the worst thing is you're not even making anything from it as a company. If you sold the maps in Crown Store, I would somehow understand, but not even map, uh, not even that. Uh, Mafia Cat 115 says, strongly agree. I hate when there are leads locked behind treasure chests since it's RNG at every step. Getting a treasure map, it being for the right zone, and getting a lead from the chest. Add another chance if it's an ancestral lead and hoping that it is the right page that you need. But here's the thing, Mafia Cat. At least the ancestral motifs are able to be sold. The shoulder style page is not. Um, I feel like it should be. Um, then at that point, you could kind of argue that it's okay to have the... If the style outfit was able to be sold, then I would be okay with the, the way it is. Um, then they said, I feel like this system needs to change. Maybe have it be in any chest in the zone has a chance of giving the lead, but the treasure maps chests are much more likely. I don't think the, the, the I think there should be a bait. Like, let's say the, there's like a 1% chance in Galen that you get the treasure map of Galen for the zone. I think it maybe should be like a 5% chance. Or like an 8% or like 3 to basically a 5 to 10% would be good. And <laughs> the last fragment for the skin, this guy doesn't even know. It seems like every update they're trying to outdo the previous one in terms of annoying places to get a lead. And uh, it honestly feels like they're trolling players sometimes. It's true. It also reminds me of Eddie Murphy's sketch about the ice cream truck driving an, an extra block just to see how fast he can make the kids run. <laughs> That's true! I forgot about that sketch! <laughs> it's true though. Um, and to be honest, I, I really do agree. Like, there should be a bigger chance to get Galen treasure maps. And it's not just Galen, like, they should make it for like every zone. To where, like, if you're in that zone, you have a bigger chance to get um, the the zone treasure maps than the um, 
the other treasure maps and and not be like some ridiculous number if it's like one percent make it like a f like a three to five percent chance that it's galen so it gives people a chance to to farm it you know um And this is, this is right here. This is hardly the first time that an antiquity lead has dropped from a treasure map. I know I'm very different from most of the other places in the game, but I prefer to find leads wherever and whenever I find them without knowing ahead of, of time which leads are in which zones and what activities they drop from. It's a lot more fun that way. I don't get why players complain about how grinding the game is, but then spend so much time grinding for things they feel must be obtained as soon as possible. You can choose to play that way or you can choose not to play that way. I agree with C CGT Gruff. So, um, I mean, there's a couple of things that I do go out of my way to farm because, you know, you need them for PvE, PvP. But it's a skin and a shoulder style. Like, are you going to be role-playing? Um, if you're going to be role-playing with that, then I agree. Like, I get it. But if you're not, then... Let it happen naturally. Like, I like this guy. And I have gotten leads naturally. Um, and it's actually been pretty cool because I'm like, oh, what kind of lead did I get? <gasps> oh, that's cool. I got that lead. Oh, this is great. Like, for example, when I was running VDSR, um, the little um, wheel lead for the furnishing is in there. And I've only gotten two of those so far with the many times I ran VDSR. But, um, I've said to myself, like, I'm not going to go farm the lead. If I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. Like, it's, it's stuff like that. So, I'm feeling as if the devs have gone all, oh my god, they only got the latest and greatest mythic only a couple of days in. So, they started making some of the leads so difficult to get. Everyone feeling like it isn't ever going to happen. Between the crab boss and the high all events, I'm sort of leaning that way myself when it comes to Oaken Soul, and I still have one to get on my third account, EU main, when she gets to CP160. Not all that soon at this point. So the triple overheard of RNG for this makes a strange kind of sense to me. Not fun, not cool, but not actual, not exactly unexpected. It's true, like, they're trying to make it a little bit harder so you can play the game a little bit longer. I get it. I get it. Well, like I said, going back to, to the, the thing, um, the motif, I think, should be like the ancestral motifs are, where you should be able to sell it. Like, you get the lead, you get the motif, be able to sell it. Um, it gives people a chance to, basically, if the the skin is fine, but um, it gives people a chance to get the style page if they want to buy it. So... Well, I agree that this is a little bit over the top for both to not be, you know, being able to, to sell. Then there you go. Now, um, this is a thing we talked about in the podcast yesterday. And, um, or, well, not yesterday, but this past week. Um, you guys can go check that podcast out. Um basically we need a new race or, or a new class um i personally like both but um the new class definitely needed the new race i mean it, it, it i don't know so rex the game um rex the game non says there's been talking of forums about scenarios i figure the poll could be placed here for the community so that Sauce Kevin could report back to the devs on the creative side of things if he has time for it in the schedule. So this guy's like, yay. Hey, like, you know, if you're going to listen to the community, I'm posting this here in general discussion. And, you know, if, you, if you're if you able to take time off your schedule to kind of see some of these stuff, then there you go. And then they go, having said that, we know a new class won't be happening until the server PvP issues are resolved. But when they're working again, which... Do you believe should be a priority one in implementing in the game? A new class or a new race? Whichever choice you elect, if you have examples or ideas for either or both for that matter, please list them in the comment section. In regards to class, if you have a class idea, it might help give them a description rather than just giving a name. 
or as others members in the community may have a different idea of what that may entail. An example of my might um, be a bard class. What does a bard entail lore wise and his skill wise? Um this one says neither not without more character slots. You're given character slots when they make a new class. Like they give you one. So like stop it. Um a new class means just three extra skill lines your current characters can never have. A new race is available to all and doesn't change the balance of the game. It should be essentially just cosmetic. Um I don't know about that because you have um a new race, you have the uh passives the the race passives so i mean it, it could be it's not just cosmetic it does change the balance of the game potentially um depending on how they go like how they go with it they could take you know something from each of the races that are out there right now and it, it does change the game though and this guy says why not a new weapon why not um so <laughs> One thing that I was saying in the podcast, I didn't get to explain the whole thing, but the I was watching the video the other day on YouTube, and they were talking about a new the monk class before the druid class, and they were saying the monk could have like a melee kind of thing where like instead of weapons, they could have like uh the knuckles like in their hands and such to where and and that could be a new weapon so the the knuckles um so tomo tomo of hyrule um a new race is on honestly nothing special three passives and that's it that's way less content than we've ever had before for any chapter besides very few races would fit lore wise with murmur being one of the only sensible options but i would be 100 percent in if they gave us the fish elves i have a murmur character concept that i really want to start so it'd be great if he could actually be a murmur instead of a recolored dunmer a new class is a lot more interesting of a chapter feature, but that does mean that uh, anybody who already has 18 characters in their account won't be able to use it without deleting a character, um, unless they expand the number of character slots. Uh, they usually do. There would be a lot of complaints on the forum that gave us a new class and not expand the slots, or gave us a class change token. It essentially barring bet players from using it. A new weapon is the best. It's still a decent amount of skill. It's actives and passives, which we haven't had since elsewhere. And it would let vets still use it. Plus the fact that it would get a lot of people into all content to free farm spears or whatever for each weapon type and motif. It, if I could have anything, I'd take spears, but I still give them armor too. That'd be nice. Um, <laughs> I totally forgot about the motifs. Um, <laughs> if they did that, I think the like let's say if it's like the melee thing with monks that i was talking about i think they would oof that's 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 a tough one as far as look for older stuff um i really don't think there should be um if they make it then they can i don't think it should be a motif necessarily um, I think you could put it into a style page, but motifs, I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's a little bit iffy. Um, Rats, Rats Kiffle says, new races add nothing of value. Playing a magic or sorcerer dumber doesn't feel different than playing a magic sorcerer imperial. Uh, actually it does, but very little. New races in other games can play a different selection of classes, having different starting areas, or have unique active skills that change the way you play the game. ESO has none of that, so adding a new race is just as meaningless as adding a card game. Not to mention that a new race needs to make sense with the sequel so that it severely limits what races can be even added. A new class, on the other hand, is a complete shakeup of the game. Even for the people who don't play the new class, for better or worse, it changes rate comps and PvP encounters. A new class is a breath of fresh air for the game and can give even the most veteran players something new and exciting to try out, which they haven't had before. To be honest, I really think it should be new class and new race. Like, why not both? If they're gonna do it, shake it up a little bit. Um... And I mean, I, I, I get it. Um, 
new skill lines, add a four skill line to the currently available classes. I mean, maybe. Um. There's, I don't know. Um, then Moonsara says, new class, new weapon, new race, new PvP content, new service for EU region, fixes of old and new bugs. The game pretty much needs all of that, in my opinion. Not just one little thing at this point. Um, so, there's really nothing else that has been said as, uh, as far as, uh, like, the fish elves is the only one that's really been, like, kind of discussed a little bit. So, maybe, maybe that... So, yeah, there you go. So, on to the next. Uh, what a communication from Sauce might look <laughs> like if everything was a riot. <laughs> Demonic Goat again. While we previously announced that we would end the year with better combat balance, we're not going to be able to do that at this time. Unfortunately, pieces of the combat system UI experience were broken by unrelated work on a different part of the game. Since we made the original promise in 2021 to bring back healthy and stable combat, the Sauce team lost some key people that would have been involved in this. Rehiring for roles and onboarding new members takes time that impacts respective projects. That means the amount of work to fix the combat system will take longer than we had hoped, and this is something we were able to complete in the time for the end of 2022. So we had to make the call not to release the patch. We know that this is not the news we were hoping. <laughs> The reason monthly event updates are a priority for live works, and we have <laughs> so Rats uh, Rats Kiffel says Sauce can definitely learn from Riot Games here. This is what proper communication looks like, and considering it arrived in a timely manner, not at some point in January, with some apology guar. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to learn here. For context, Riot Games announced the return of a game mode before the end of this year. But because the person responsible for game modes quit, the new person in charge could not get the game mode ready in time. So this is what the official Riot developer team Twitter account posted. Only that the op adjusted the content to be ESO related. And then the Monty Goat says, Can you imagine the Riot it would cause if they respond to criticism on this communication from a dejected community? Honestly, it's fair to call us out for not making things coming um this communication sooner in an ideal world we would have truthfully we've had an, uh, a longer form blog in the works that was also going to announce this a little sooner however things shifting internally not new members <laughs> never played a riot game so that thank you for the context we'd be happy to get this kind of information even if things would get pushed back um ben tsg says communication like this is what what is needed the news doesn't have to be good news all the time just let us know what's going on but to be honest though they are kind of letting us know i mean gina did post that i agree it should be a little bit sooner um the timing i think the communication is fine where it is um they are communicating better than before the timing is not necessarily the best um that's that's the only thing um, and then Tech Maybe Hicks says, honestly, I know this was made as an example of positive as far as communication goes, but I could see this easily being a thing sauce proposed to kick the can down the road a year once again. In fact, this sort of communication happens about once a year, something like just doing the gist, not finding each to quote. Here's our roadmap for our year's performance. Year later, when things are worse, we know the year of the performance did not get the result we wanted, but we're not done and we'll be doing a series of tests throughout the years. Two years later, we understand performance is not acceptable, so we're reworking the code from the ground up. This sort of work will take a better part of the year and better part of a year later, beginning with the first updates of the next year, we'll begin the rework code in chunks. So anyway, we get it. It's it's a few and far between, but we get it. It's just generally meaningless so nothing is really improving or recently seeing no evidence is happening at all. I'm not really sure why people want to hear it at all, especially what's in the op if, hey, sorry, promise we're trying, so just stick around. I mean, I agree. Um, To be honest, I'd rather them communicate in a way that we see that they are working on stuff um and just recognizing that like kind of like what gina said um give us a timeline and you know if that timeline be realistic with that timeline um if if you think you're not going to be able to get it done by the summer 19th then don't say the summer 19th don't give us a timeline just said we're working as hard as we can on it you know we're gonna try to fix it um 
there is no timeline right now in the works because we don't know the extent of the whatever you know so there there you go that's what i think and why does it feel like pvp is more rewarding than pve oh my god because you prefer pvp over pve that this guy i don't know yeah um Texas 1200 1R whatever the heck this guy's name is because it kind of is rewards of the worthy which can give you geodes which can be turned into potent urn crux if you know how AP racks up very fast and can buy things that are incredible incredibly expensive such as gold jewelry end of campaign rewards give you numerous expensive items and a lot of gold tell our stones in the IC can get you very expensive items from one of those suburb imperial rewards I got a sword that I sold for 250k PvP is more of a challenge and a test of skill of the game. The time element being in the form of gear, CP grinding the skills to a great effect. Add on top of the success of being able to beat your opponents, the rewards are also pretty good. But when it comes to raw gold income, there are better options. Then again, you'll get more transmute crystals that you can possibly use in PvP over PvE. Vevvev, that is correct. While the there's better options for raw gold income, um, if you need better options, go check Artea. Uh, we have her links in Discord when the streams and videos announcements. So just scroll up and go watch her channel. Like she literally tells you what you can make um, in gold and how much gold. Even if she's on PC, like it still translates um, pretty well onto console because it's the same process. Um, while the prices may not be the same, you still making gold. So there you go. Um, basically you do get more transmutes. That's the only thing that as a PVE player first, I struggle with, but they did put, um, a lot of transmutes in the tales of tribute. So I do that for transmutes and the daily random and that, you know, I get about, if I do all my Tales of Tributes um, for the day on five of my characters, which takes me about 30 minutes to an hour, I get a piece of gear. So 25 to 30 uh, transmutes, maybe even more. Um, I think sometimes it's going to be to 50, I think. I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But I can get two pieces of gear a day if I do that. Um, and that's not bad. That's that's the transmute farm for PvE players now, in my opinion. Um so there you go pvp players transmutes absolutely you do have some great gears and the rewards of the worthy with you can sell but guys pve players they still make money if you're good at what you do in pve you sell carries you sell motifs from four player content you sell motifs from the uh like the new vdsr trial vmo motifs are still like a stupid expensive because of the drop rate, like celestial motifs and VSO are, you know, the that motif, I can't remember exactly which one it is, but like there's a celestial motif that's 20k a pop, and you get sell it at 20k a pop pretty consistently and pretty quickly. So yes, PvP is more of a challenge. There's pros and cons, and there's better ways to farm geodes in PvP than PvE. But um, and there's there's better ways to farm gold income, to be honest, you know, by yourself over any of those. But um, as far as, like, each of the content, there's stuff that each content thrives. And if you do both on a consistent basis and you're good at both, then you're going to reap the rewards from both. Um, and I'm talking about like the carries rewards, the, the gold you get from carries, the motifs you get from four man content, the geodes you get from PVP, the, you know, the rewards of the worthy, uh, stuff, the gear, like the f satisfaction, the rewards, you know, that you're pretty good at PVP, the success that you have in PVE to be able to do carries, like, um, whether it be a trial or dungeon carry. It doesn't matter like even arena carries like it, it really doesn't matter there's pros and cons to both parts of the game and there's uh, ways for both parts of the game to earn you um, a lot of money if you're good at it so there you go 
Well, folks, thank you for watching. Make sure you guys check out our Patreon. Um, we would really like for everybody to, you know, support us there. Um, the money that we get from Patreon is going to be used to get equipment for our podcast team. And just to kind of upkeep the uh, the guild uh, discord and everything, uh, we're trying to get some things situated in the, in the guild and, you know, the income could also be used to get uh, some content and such for guildies. So it would be a really great thing if, you know, you guys could uh, check out our Patreon and donate if you can. Uh, please, if you're not able to, you know, if you're money strapped, don't do it. We'd rather you handle your, your business and we don't want people going, you know, with without food for a day because they donated five dollars to our patreon um check out our discord boosters thank you guys for boosting our discord boss styles cougars bay scoring music 09 x reading x and merc 271 and make sure you guys like share and subscribe our facebook twitter and instagram and we have a new website coming up we will have details of that soon and as always, make sure you guys check out our guild. We have weekly traders, we're donation based, we have Monday night events, beginner and advanced prog teams. We are looking into um, a permanent spot in our chill team and we have sub spots open as well. So if you like that, uh, please DM Cougars Bay on Discord or just message her on the PSN as well and we have a tales of tribute that is coming up for the christmas tournament the team has been there and it's gonna be a great great show thanks again folks for watching we have all our social media links and make sure you guys hit a like and subscribe button on our youtube channel so we we would like to get that youtube thing so holla holla